Hey guys, it's MJ with Crow Tarot, and I want to take a moment to show you the US games version of the Crow Tarot. Um, I have to say, I think that they blew it out of the water. They did a great job. Um, I'm, I'm so impressed and just thrilled, thrilled um, with what they did. And I mean, there's a reason why US games has been around for over 50 years. I mean, they're simply professional. I mean, it's just it's beautiful, and I'm so grateful to have my artwork contained in this box. And yeah, it's blown away. So, I mean, look at the attention to detail is just so lovely. I, it's like I'm, I'm in awe. Um, their deck also includes uh, a little guidebook, and this guidebook uh, has 86 pages, whereas the Indiegogo backer deck I was limited to 28. So there is more space to, to add a little bit more information, but still. Um, it is limited. I mean, it's, it is just, it's a little black book or a little, a little black book. It's a little white book. Um, but still, nonetheless, it is beautiful. The cards themselves, uh, the backs are different than the Indiegogo back in that it's, it's a more generic, uh, you know, design, but still it complements the cards nicely. And the cards themselves are very thick. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say very thick. I've ha I do have a deck that's thicker, but they are thicker than the Indiegogo deck. Uh, they can still shuffle nicely. And, um, uh, you know, for those who like to have a thicker card stock, I think you're going to be very pleased with how this deck um feels it's, it's definitely it shuffles a little bit harder than um the indiegogo deck i i have to say i like i like the feel of the cards um of my my backer deck uh they're very silky they're smooth they shuffle nicely and um you know it, it is a little bit thinner um so i mean it depends on how you feel about card stock um you know i think either way you're going to be pleased with this deck um, so let's get going and let me show you the cards. The star, I'm going to do this kind of quickly here, Ace of Wands. And I tried to hold on to the imagery of the original Rider Waite deck as much as I could. Um, you know, again, this was my very first time making a tarot card deck. And I wanted to uh, you know, use elements that would help me learn as well as, as I was creating it. And that is New York in the background. Um, I went to school there and it is still, I hold New York very much in my heart. Um, the Magician, you can almost feel the power that this card contains. The King of Pentacles, Midas, oops, let me turn these over. The Hermit, this was one of the first cards I made, and this is the card that got me hooked um, on creating 78 more cards, or 77 more cards, rather. Um, it was, yeah, I love this card, and um, the message, you know, it, it really hit home during a very difficult time in my life. The Five of Swords. the Two of Wands, the Page of Cups. He's talking to the fish, which I love, or listening to the fish, rather. Maybe he's talking to the Sun. And you'll notice that the borders are, um, for those who have the Indiegogo deck, the borders have colors that correspond with the, um, the imagery on the card. Whereas with this um, deck, the the borders all have this lovely parchment feel. The Eight of Cups. This is one of my favorite cards. Um, and although, you know, yes, I do digital collage. Uh, I believe that, you know, the way I put everything together, you know, is a, is a bit different in that I really do try to give it a, um, a you know, a less, um, you know, like plop down look. Um, I combine drawing with my digital collage um, and and paint actually on the screen uh, as I'm as I'm working. So I kind of pull all these different elements together. For the eight of cups, um, I put in here um, this you know the color here where the where the crow is standing on the bank of the river uh, was inspired by 
uh, here on the Hood Canal, uh, the, the banks of the river are just covered with oyster shells and it creates this beautiful white um, pattern, you know, like, and it's just, it's beautiful. So that was the inspiration um, for the Eight of Cups, the Page of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, Justice is Blind, the high priestess. I think you can tell the cards that I really delight in making because I really do um, add, I mean, I just go, I go a little crazy on these cards. Um, the 10 of swords. And, you know, I, I didn't have this bloody image of a crow on the card. I, I wanted it to be more of a feeling of just the heaviness and the sorrow that comes from having your heart broken um, and, and feeling betrayal. Uh, so, you know, that's why there's not so much in the way of gore here. Um, it's more, you know, the, the damage is done inside. Um, and you can see on the other side of this cliff, there is a light and there is a pathway out. The fool. Now, yes, this bird could fly away. It could hop off the log anytime. It could go and see what's ahead on the river. Um, and make its decision whether or not to stay on the log, but it doesn't. It stays, you know, firm-footed on this log, and it lets the river, um, you know, unfold before it. With you know, and it has faith that it will provide a wonderful journey. And although the wind is whistling in the in the distance, um, that maybe a storm is approaching, it, it knows that it's leaving this, um, you know, like a place where there isn't much going on. It's barren and. There is, he has hope that in the future it will be abundant and the, it will provide a place of security. The Ten of Wands. I think you can almost feel the struggle in the crow as it's trying to lift these wands. I feel this some days. I mean, I feel this card. The Eight of Swords. Again, um, although it is digital collage, there is a lot of hand-drawn elements in my cards. Um, and, you know, the crow being blind to the, the um, you know, the solution that that is right there. It just needs to see that the cage isn't, isn't what it thinks it is. The Knight of Pentacles. The Tower. Um, I just imagine with this card, you know, all these crows roosting for the night and then having this storm come through and just disrupt their life and sending them off into the air. Um, each of my, my cards has about 100 different layers. So when I build my deck in Photoshop, it's not, um, it's not one layer. There are about 100 different layers that incorporate everything from digital collage to drawing um, to photographs. Uh, to different filters, and I try to create a piece that is, you know, it, it tells a cohesive story. Um, for example, this foil here uh, in, that you see that's kind of creating the fog, that is actually a uh, tin foil that I took a photo of. I crumpled up and I took a photo of in my kitchen, and then I use that. Like, so some of these elements I actually are, you know, are photos that I find where I, I pull together these textures that, that I, I personally find interesting and I can see, you know, their use in another way. The Empress, Death, you can see there the tinfoil clouds there. As the crow rises up, letting go of what is no longer needed or what is holding it back. The Four of Cups, Judgment, during this time when I was making this card, my daughter was really into stacking rocks. Um, and so I thought, you know, well, of course crows would make little, you know, stacked rocks as, you know, markers, you know, uh, graveyard mar or grave markers, at least in my mind they do, and um, kind of seemed fitting for this card. The Hierophant with the Key of Knowledge. the King of Swords. And you'll notice with the sword cards, they're all very um, gray. I wanted them to have a steely feel, a steely look to them. Um, you know, just to show that there's like lack of emotion. They're kind of cold and um, 
they, you know, they come, they come forward to bring you, um, you know, like a stern truth and, you know, authority or a brashness. The Knight of Cups. The Six of Pentacles. You know, the Six of Pentacles to me is that person who, sure, I'll, I'll help you out. And then, you know, a month later, they like to throw that up at you and be like, oh, remember that time I helped you out? Now I need a bigger favor from you. The Two of Cups. They share a heart. The Seven of Wands. And sometimes you have to look carefully in my cards because I do put little things in there that you might not see, like the feather on the side of the cliff. The hangman. The colors of this card, I don't know if it shows through if my camera is um, good enough to show, but the color is this patina green. It's, I think it's probably my favorite color in the entire world. Um, and it just kind of has a real, real meditative feel to it. The eight of wands, there's a lot of energy and it's pulling you forward. The nine of cups, again, there's that color. The queen of wands. I've had people ask, why did you use male lions when it's a queen of wands? Well, the reason is really simple. It's because the, the female is controlling these, these um, big male lions and it's her power that um, you know, gets them to do what she wants and pulls together this team and uses their energy to further her cause. And she's the one with the strength. And um, you know, like Beyonce said, who's gonna rule the world? Girls, well, maybe together with men, but you know, equally. Ace of Cups. The Seven of Pentacles. Out of the barren tree, the mom creates a nest for her, her young that's warm and comforting. So there's the clash here between the, the barren tree, the, you know, the, the dead tree, and this warm light. I wanted to create this feeling like of warmth, the, the, like the energy that comes from, you know, um, from the pinks and the oranges that come together. The nine of swords. There's so much anxiety here. Um, of course, one of the greatest fears if you're a bird is being caged or being trapped. There's fighting. There's death. Those are all things that would keep me up at night. The Page of Pentacles. The Three of Wands. The Ace of Swords. Strength. This card is one of my absolute favorites. Um, it was one of my favorites to make. Well, one, I'm a Leo. But two, it's the only card I think where I injected a little bit of humor in that the crow is standing on top of the lion holding down its its um, its eye and it's doing it in a playful way. It's not brutish or, you know, it's not pecking at the, the lion. It's, it's like they're having fun. They're enjoying life. The Two of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles. Again, the color here is very warm. I wanted it to project a motherly love. Uh, there's a rabbit at the base of her throne, um, symbolizing fertility, the lotus's purity and love, the butterfly for harmony, the fruit tree is, uh, you know, abundance. And, you know, you can tell she's just, she's feeling good. She's a very loving, loving creature. Temperance. Um, funny story. I have these crows that um, have become my pets. And on my balcony, I have plants and they have taken to taking the um, plastic 
liners out of my pots and um, of the dead plants, the plants that I have neglected. And they take those plastic pots, I have no idea where, but they leave the dead plant in the dirt all over my balcony. I don't know what they're doing with those plastic pots. I imagine they're constructing something, maybe like the Three of Pentacles, using them as a tool. The Six of Wands. The Page of Wands. the Six of Cups. And although I think this was um, maybe a bit too nuanced, the background is very muted and black and white, which makes me think of, you know, um, going back in time. The Seven of Cups with all the choices. The Devil, one of my favorite cards. <laughs> This was one of, I think, the most fun I had um, creating this card. It's so dark, but, you know, it, there's just, it, it really was a, a fun project on this one. Um, the little bird that could free itself, that's trapped by the crow. Again, um, I use a lot, of, I use hearts, um, like actual hearts, you know, um, in my art. I don't really prefer, I don't like using the Valentine Day type part, although I do have one in here. Um, for the most part, I prefer the heart with the veins, the arteries. Um, you can see how the crow is feeling sad. You can feel the sadness of this crow as its partner flies away. And you can also see how the partner may see an opportunity that will free itself. And maybe, you know, it needs to go after that despite the sadness, the world, the lovers, the 10 of cups. And again, um, you know, I did want to try and keep this deck as close to the rider weight using crows in lieu of people. Um, because just, you know, for those who are, who are learning tarot, who love crows, I, you know, figured what a great way to pull the, those two things together. Um, there's a warmness to this card. I mean, I really think that you can feel the bliss. At least when I was creating it, I was hoping that that was what I would project is that feeling of just pure happiness with looking at each other and then having their young in the nest, the little songbird. The five of wands where they're all sort of out there. I don't know if you've, if you've ever seen crows up in the sky and they're, they're battling. I mean, they're not really battling, they're playing. I mean, crows actually play and they're going after each other in a, in a way like they're not trying to hurt one another, but it just fills the sky with this energy. And it is, if I can, um, if I, if I am lucky enough to have my, my phone with me while this is happening, I'll take a, I'll take a video and show you guys because it really is, pretty amazing it's so loud they're raucous um they're just all over the air and i just imagine that they're each one like saying like look at me look at me but anyway that's the the energy of the five of wands the king of wands i see these two as a as a partnership um and because of that that is why the scale when i created this you'll see that the lion and the crow are very similar in size because they work together The Eight of Pentacles. The Four of Swords. This crow is not dead. Um, it's not supposed to be dead. What it is, is it's taking a break and it's seeing its life from a place of death. You know, it's it's going in and it's really evaluating where it is where it has been. What's its self talk? You know, um, is it is it listening to its true voice or is it letting the chatter of the outside um, infiltrate its mind? And it's it's gaining its strength from from really stepping away from the criticisms of others and really, you know, playing dead for a little bit and and checking out what what it has to say about itself. So it's inside this mausoleum right here, pretending to be dead. It's not pushing up the daisies quite yet. The chariot, 
um, the bird is flying on a storm. It's a, you know, like a fast moving energy storm and it's pushing the bird towards its goal. And, you know, with this card, I mean, you know, like any windstorm it has to control it. It has to be able to harness that energy. And otherwise it could be flown, it could be thrown through the air um, somewhere it doesn't want to go. The Five of Pentacles. This tells the story of two different sets of crows. The crows that have chosen to leave the ground, the cold um, storm has moved them up into the tree. They, they, you know, they were able to see this opportunity. Um, and then there are the crows that are so focused on just getting through the day and just getting through the storm that they're unable to see any other choice. And that, you know, their focus is on struggling where if they just let go and let the wind take them, they may end up in that tree. The Two of Swords. Visually, this is one of my favorite cards. Um, I mean, just, you know, not to sound, um, you know, pompous or anything like that, but just when I created this card, I had an idea and I executed it exactly how I wanted to execute it. And I'm, you know, it's blind to any of the choices. It's blind to the fact that it's just standing on, on two swords that I could easily hop off of, but it feels like they're so much sharper than they are. The queen of swords. She's very, you know, she's that friend who will tell you like it is. And she may not mean to come off as harsh or brash and her heart is like in the right place, but you don't know that because there's this sort of, you know, there's a coldness to her. And that's what I wanted to get through in this card. You know, again, with the sword cards, they tend to have um, a, a cooler, a cooler feel to them. The emperor, and a note on the emperor card for those who have the Indiegogo backer deck. That file, I am not sure what happened, but I found, I found the right file, and thankfully, so did U.S. Games. This is the original file I must have sent to them, and so this card looks more in line like the rest of the deck. It doesn't stand out. The Four of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles. The Knight of Wands. The Six of Swords flying off to a new beginning. I tend to use cherry blossoms um, to symbolize new beginnings. It did leave, it had to leave a few, you know, tail feathers. It left, you know, it didn't get away completely without harm, but it is going in a new direction, one that proves to be better. Uh, I feel like with this card, you can almost feel the sadness in this crow. Um, as it's looking at the cups that has that have fallen over when it returned, um, here's another one where I, I put in the um, the white on the riverbank. The wheel of fortune. The queen of cups. She is just full of abundance. There is so much. I know there's a lot going on in this card um, because there's a lot going on with the Queen of Cups. She's intuitive. She is just, um, you know, just an amazing creature. The Four of Wands. The Nine of Wands. The King of Cups, where the storm is really, um, you know, very, uh, you know, not the storm, the water is like, you know, really choppy because of the storm. And then the King of Cups is able to take that and create a calm sea. The Seven of Swords, where the crow comes in and tries to take, take um, the other swords from the crows, but, you know, he doesn't get away with them. And he also leaves his calling card in the form of the feathers. The Ten of Pentacles. This is just, you know, a place of complete comfort. The roost, they have everything they need to roost here. They have shelter, they have water, they have fruit. They, they're just surrounded by beauty. The moon, the bird in the cage, and the little fish. And then the reflection of the moon is the crow looking downward. And then the Three of Cups. 
So thank you guys. I hope you enjoy this deck. I'll post more videos and I also do a, day a daily reading um, that you can find on my website using the cards. Um, and if you're interested in this deck, it will be out by US Games later uh, this year, early next year. And the links uh, to order or to pre pre-order to reserve your copy. I know that they only ordered so many. So, um, you know, I'm not sure how long it takes once the first round that they they printed are sold, how long it takes to get another set out or, you know, to, to do the printing again. So um, they are available for pre-order. So reserve your copy if you're interested in them. And you can find the link again um, is below. So thank you guys. Peace to you. Bye-bye.